Nvidia created a lot of hype around the RTX 3000 series launch and left a lot of people considering legitimately upgrading, potentially for the first time in a number of years. But the one question that I've been asked more than anything is, should I upgrade my older CPU? Which, what they're really asking is, how much will a 3080 be bottlenecked by an older CPU, like a 4790K for example? Well in this video I want to answer that question, so stick around and enjoy. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Now the term bottlenecking is something we hear quite a lot these days, but I think that the majority of people who use it don't quite understand or don't quite get the point. See, bottlenecking isn't something that is specific to, to one piece of hardware and one this CPU will bottleneck this GPU X amount. No matter what system you build, it will have a bottleneck depending on what you're doing. If you build a 1900K and 3090 based system, well that 1900K, if you're gaming at 1080p, will still be a significant bottleneck uh, for that 3090, because if you overclock it, or if the next generation of Intel CPU comes along, I can guarantee you, you will get more performance out of that 3090, which means the CPU was the bottleneck. Now it's not always your CPU that is the bottleneck. If you're playing games at 4K, it's almost always your graphics card, but you can even have things like storage or VRAM, or even your internet, depending on what you're doing. And all of that's to say that, it really depends on what you do with your system and even the games that you play specifically to determine if you actually need to upgrade or not. So that's not an answer for how much a CPU might actually bottleneck something like 3080. So let's get into the testing. Now I'm using, an, uh, for my older CPU, an i7 4790K. Now that's of course not the oldest CPU you could use here, and there are plenty of people who are using Sandy Bridge 26 and 2700Ks for example, but that's pretty much the oldest reasonable CPU I have that you might actually have, so we're going with that one. I'm also using a Ryzen 3900X here as my new CPU, again because it's pretty much the fastest CPU I have my hands on right now, and let's face it, it's a pretty decent chip too. As for the graphics card, I'm using this ASUS TUF uh, RTX 3080, which I would do a full review on, except because I don't have any other 3080s right now, I can't really give any point of comparison, so uh, this video will, will suffice for now. Either way, this setup uh, I'm going to be using with some DirectX 12 games, COD Modern Warfare, Battlefield 5, and Fortnite, all running in DirectX 12 mode, and on basically max settings, although all of them have any ray traced effects and NVIDIA reflex, stuff like that, all of that is turned off. I also tried to keep the systems as similar as possible. Both are using 16 gigs of RAM, of course DDR3 versus DDR4, but I tried to match it as well as I could. Both are cooled by a 240mm AIO, of course the same graphics card, and even the same SSD as well to make sure that everything as, as similar as possible. I also kept an eye on the GPU power draw temperatures and clock speeds so that that's, you know, excess ambient temperature for example, didn't uh, contribute to the uh, performance differences between the two, and I'm going to be testing at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So with all of that said, let's take a look at the differences. So starting off with Battlefield 5, you can see that at 1080p there is a massive difference here. You're getting 191 FPS average at with the 1300X versus 156 with the 4790K. In fact, you're actually getting more performance at 1440p with the 1300X than you are with the 4790K at 1080p, and it's almost identical across the board between 1440p and 1080p just because of how much of a bottleneck that is. When it comes to 4K though, it's pretty much within margin of error, really no difference between the two. The same story goes to COD Modern Warfare, where you're seeing a significant performance gap, 40 FPS difference uh, at 1080p on the averages, and a fairly sizable difference on the 1% lows too. When it comes to 1440p, it's a lot closer of a match, although the 1% lows are a good bit lower, and at 4K, uh, it's very similar, although again, those 1% lows are something to, to keep an eye on, although at 4K, even 78 FPS as, it's, as a 1% low is still pretty fine. When it comes to Fortnite, this one is a little bit closer, with only a 20 FPS loss at 1080p, and almost on par exactly, 
at 4K and at uh, 1440p, even on the 1% lows. In fact, the 4790K is actually technically better here across the board at 1440p and 4K. So really, if you're gaming at 1080p, it's a pretty big difference. But if you're gaming at 1440p or 4K, there really isn't all that much in it. So if you're gaming at 1080p on a 3080, well, first of all, what are you doing? Like, if you have that much money, just buy a 1440p high refresh rate monitor, man. Seriously, it's amazing. Unless you have a high refresh rate, like 240 hertz 1080p monitor, and then I can let you off. Now, either way, if you are gaming at 1080p, especially if you are gaming at higher refresh rates, like 240 or the new 360 hertz monitors, well, that older CPU is actually a fairly significant bottleneck. You're looking at, what, 20% performance loss in COD, which is a fairly sizable chunk. You're going from over 200 to about 160, which, again, at those higher refresh rates, is a pretty big deal. Now, if you were gaming at 1440p, well, it doesn't really matter too much. The 1% lows are probably the, the most troubling or the most concerning thing, but considering the FPS that the 3080 gets here, even the 1% lows are still way, way above the, the playable limit, and I don't think that you would realistically notice a difference uh, between the two, so not a big deal. At 4K, the, the story is even more simple. The 1% lows are still a bit off, but the, the average FPS performance is, is pretty much negligible. It's within margin of error, really. Um, and so if you're gaming at 4K, it doesn't matter. 1440p, it does maybe a little bit. And at 1080p, unless you have a ultra high refresh rate monitor, well, it still probably doesn't matter. For a card like the 3080, I honestly think it's probably just a bit too high end for it to care what CPU you're, you're you know, pairing it with. Of course, if you're pairing it with a dual core i3 from like 10 years ago, yes, you should definitely be upgrading. But if you're pairing it with a mid to high end CPU from the last five years or so, like a 4790K, 6700K, something like that, I don't think you're gonna care all that much. Of course, if you do have one of those ultra high refresh rate monitors like 240 or 360 hertz, you will probably see a fairly big difference in upgrading to a faster or newer CPU. But if you're running 144 hertz, if you're running 1440p or 4K, I don't think it makes all that much sense right now. Of course, there are other reasons why you might want to upgrade your CPU other than just to unlock the true potential of your, your graphics card's performance. Like if you want to start streaming, even with a quad core and using the NVENC encoder, it can still be a fairly big performance hit uh, using even that encoder just because OBS still has to capture the game, send out the encoded data and all that stuff. And so that can be worthwhile. Also, if you started doing creative stuff uh, like video editing or 3D modeling and you want a bit more performance, that can be useful too. But if you're just looking at GPU performance, it doesn't seem to make too much sense right now. With that said, I do wonder if when the 3070 is available, if that will make a bigger difference in, on having a, a slower CPU, because obviously it's gonna provide less performance and therefore if you're still losing 20%, well, that suddenly makes a lot more of a, a noticeable difference. So I'd like to remake this video when that's available. And if you want to see that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, as well as obviously for all the other videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you going to be upgrading your CPU for your new graphics card, whether it's the 3080 or 3070 or Big Navi when that's available? Feel free to let me know down there. Also, are you getting a new GPU and would you upgrade a CPU it, hypothetically, if you're going to upgrade your GPU too, feel free to let me know in those comments down below. I'm going to leave a link to the ASUS TUF 3080 in the description down below. I can't promise that there will be any stock where I leave the link to, which will be Amazon and an Amazon affiliate link, but it's there for you to check. And maybe if you're watching this in six months, you might actually be able to find one. Um, otherwise, that is pretty much it. There are a, are a whole load of other links in the description down below you can check out from Overclock UK affiliate links if you're buying stuff like this from there, or even merch or hoodies or t shirts like this one, Patreon if you want to support me directly and get ad free videos, and a load of other stuff too. There's also going to be a load of other videos that you can check out in the end cards and yeah that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions feel free to leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.